This is the seemingly simple high pass filter, which is usually found in the preamp block, but it's really a form of EQ. The high pass filter is normally an on off switch, labeled with a sloping line and sometimes a number or frequency. What it does is sharply cut off all sounds below the cutoff frequency. The reason you need this is to keep low frequencies generated by the few instruments that do create them out of all the other mics on your stage. This helps make your mix cleaner and better. Mackie logically calls it a low cut filter, but no one else does. Some boards like Mackie label it like this. That means the cutoff begins at 75 hertz and removes frequencies by 18 decibels for every octave you go down from 75 hertz. So at one octave down from 75 hertz, which is 37 and a half, the output is cut by 18 decibels. That's a lot. If it doesn't have a frequency on the label, the cutoff is usually between 75 and 100 hertz. On better analog boards, and most digital ones, you have a variable control and can actually choose the cutoff frequency, which I find very useful for making good mixes. Most people believe the only reason to have a high pass filter is to remove P-pops or plosives from vocal mics, which it helps, or to remove low rumbling sounds from your instruments or your pastor. But most voices and instruments don't make really low frequencies. So what the high pass is used for is to remove the really low frequencies produced by the few that do produce them from every other mic on your stage. Because low frequencies are long wavelengths, they're not blocked or absorbed like high frequencies are. So each mic on your stage will pick up all the really low instruments, as well as what's coming out of your subwoofers. So you should always use the high pass filter on every input, except the few instruments that really do produce them. Bass, kick drum, floor toms, and maybe piano or keyboard, depending on the music. But remember, only a little more than the bottom octave of a piano or keyboard is below the high pass cutoff frequency. And how often does Martha play those keys? By the way, if your board has the controls to choose the cutoff frequency, you can really improve your mixes by cutting off as much as you can from the bottom end of each instrument and voice. On most men's voices, you can set the high pass to 150 hertz and not affect their voice much. On women's voices, you can go as high as 200 hertz or even higher. On drum overhead mics, where I'm mainly trying to pick up cymbals, I might go as high as 500 hertz. But even on really low instruments like a kick drum, I would set the high pass filter to 60 or 70 hertz because the thump of the kick drum is generally above 70 hertz. And I can eliminate the bottom octave of bass from being picked up by my kick drum mic. Every bit of stray low end you can cut helps make your mix better. So if you have the control to change the high pass cutoff, find the lowest frequencies each instrument can produce and set your high pass filter at least that high and higher if it still sounds good in the mix. But if you just have a plain old switch, use it on almost everything. I'm Greg Hill for AV Genius.